Hi, this is Toby and welcome to the Four Beginners and Amateur Series Reboot. And before we get started, I have to say that I did make a few videos in these series before, but I wasn't really quite happy with the videos. So I've, I've unlisted all of them, but I will remake all of them. But today I'm going to give you five tips for beginners on how to grow cacti and succulents. Now these tips are not in any particular order, but these are just five important factors I think that beginners need to consider when growing the cacti and succulents. So tip number one is lighting. Now with most of these cacti, you want to give them as much bright light as possible. A bit of shade, such as this little poly house is okay, but they need at least, I would say around four to five hours of light a day. If you keep them indoors, it's not going to work. Your cacti will not get enough light. And how you know that it's not getting enough light, the new growth will be very thin and will be very light. So when you are growing cacti, make sure you do provide enough light for them. Otherwise they will become really unhealthy and they won't keep the compact shape. Once they do get thin, they won't fan up again in the area that has already become thin. So you do have to cut that area off if you want to keep your plant relatively nice looking. So to prevent that from happening, which is called etiolation, you have to give your plants plenty of light. Now this doesn't mean buying a plant and putting it straight out into the full sun because cacti do need to acclimatize first to the lighting. For example, if I kept my astrophytum in the shade for a couple of weeks and I bring it directly into the bright sun, it will burn the plant. So if you're getting a plant from a store, particularly if it was sold indoors, you need to slowly bring it out into brighter and brighter light to help it acclimatize before you bring it out. An example of not acclimatizing your cacti can be shown here. It's almost outgrown its old scars, but these develop from direct sun where I put when I put it from the shade straight into the sun. I used to grow my cacti undercover and it did not get enough light. So now I grow them out here. The second mistake a lot of beginners make is how to properly water your plants. Now, obviously I'm not gonna be watering my plants today because it's gonna rain soon, but I can quickly explain how you're meant to actually water your cacti and when you're supposed to water. So one important thing to remember when watering cacti is that every time you water during their active growth, you make sure that all of the substrate is wet. Don't just water a thin layer on the top of the plant. That won't do. You actually have to make sure that it's entirely soaked and the watering schedule should be a lot lower than your average plant as these plants do have adaptations to survive very dry climates. Now, this doesn't mean you don't water your cacti at all. During the growing season and during summer, particularly when it's hot, I usually give my plants water around once a week and for a lot of beginner cacti, that will do. And watering is a bit different in winter. I will go into winter care a bit later on. But one other thing to consider when watering is make sure you don't wet the, the body of the plant too much, especially if you're watering in the morning because when the bright sun hits the plant, it will actually cause it to scold and it will produce unsightly scars that will not disappear from the plant and you have to wait for it to outgrow it and become less noticeable. So when you're watering your plants, make sure it's very infrequent. Water when the soil has completely dried out and make sure you don't wet the bodies of the plant when you're watering. But other than that, there's nothing really else to it. But you must make sure you have a well draining soil, which brings us to our next part. The next tip I have for beginner growers is to choose a correct potting mix or if you feel adventurous, make your own potting mix. Now this is just the new potting mix that I have decided to use. It's two part store bought cacti succulent mix, one part horticultural sand, one part perlite, one part pumice and small amounts of other stuff like nutrients and gypsum just so that the plant has enough nutrients to survive. Now as you can see the organic component of the soil in terms of volume is actually less than 50% and you do not want a high organic component to your potting mix for cacti. This is because organic components tend to hold a lot more water and that will tend to rot out your roots. Make sure you give good aeration and drainage to your roots so that they don't rot and I will quickly show you the properties of this soil when I water it. So I have a small container here that might be typical of how you grow your plants. So we're gonna water it now and you can see when I put the water up 
it instantly drains out. That is the draining speed that you really want to look for. Very well draining, doesn't hold a lot of water. I can dry out really quickly. This ensures that your plants are not sitting constantly in moist soil, which will rot out the roots. One other thing you might have noticed from all of my plants here is that there is some sort of rock on top of the soil and you can't really see the potting mix. And now that is top dressing. Although part of it is for aesthetic reasons, one function that it actually does have is that because with cacti, sometimes it does taper down quite quickly to a thin root and you don't want to really expose that. You can't really pile soil really high up on the body of the plant because it will retain too much water and it will cause the stem to rot. Now, with something like pumice or any gritty mixture of little rocks or pebbles that you use, it actually provides a bit of air near the collar of the plant and that prevents it from rotting when when compared to just simply piling the potting mix all the way up to the same level. So if you are starting out with cacti, make sure you top dress your plants as well. It will help them. It does make them look a little bit more presentable, but it does have a function as well. And in terms of nutrient levels in the soil, they prefer low nutrient levels, but make sure they do have trace elements and everything they need, but nothing exceeding that. I don't fertilize my cacti because I do want them to grow slowly to keep a more compact form. If you do over fertilize, your cacti, they will grow a bit taller and not as compact and be a bit lighter in color. So it's really up to personal preference if you want to fertilize your cacti slightly. If you over fertilize, they will lose their shape. So, but personally, I do not fertilize my cacti or succulents at this stage. I don't see a need to. They grow really compactly and really nicely. So now we're going to talk about choosing the right pot for your plant. So we have talked about soil, now it's about the pot size. As you can see with most of my cacti, the pot size isn't actually that much larger than the plants. So I've got my ferro cactus here, and you can see even though it's a small plant, the pot does not exceed its diameter too much. Now, the reason is you don't want a large volume of soil sitting around the roots of your plant because when you water it, it will take longer to dry out and that will potentially suffocate the roots because it's in a anaerobic environment and it will probably rot out your roots as well because it's constantly moist so a pot that is roughly around the same size as your plant but slightly bigger is suitable the depth and shape of the pot is also very important considering the type of cacti you grow now for beginners i do recommend a standard pot that is around the same it has around the same width and height you can't really go wrong with that it usually fits most of the root systems in cacti now some more, some more harder to grow cacti and succulents, for example, my Euphorbia obesa, they will have a longer taproot and to accommodate that, you would need a slightly taller and thinner pot, simply because if you used a pot with the same depth but wider, you are unnecessarily adding more soil to your pot and around the plant and that will cause it to rot if you overwater it. Now, you do have to repot your cacti once they outgrow the pot, or once the diameter of the plant is starting to hit the edges of the pot, that is a good indicator to repot. I will show you an example of some plants, such as my Astrophyna Mirror Sigma here, where it is starting to need to get a repot as they are growing. They will grow, and they do grow at different rates, most cacti. But again, don't choose a pot that's too big for your plant because it won't grow that fast. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in these five tips for beginners and amateurs is overwintering. Now, a lot of people do get scared on how to overwinter their plants with most cacti and succulents and with probably all the cacti and succulents that you will encounter as a beginner. When you overwinter them, you can just simply not water them over the entirety of winter. That is what I do for the vast majority of my cacti during winter when the temperatures cool down and the days become shorter, they, the cacti will slow their metabolic activity and their growth will come to a halt. This means that at this point, they aren't really absorbing that much water from the soil, so you actually don't need to water. And by keeping them completely dry, and I'm, when I say dry, I mean bone dry, it actually slightly increases the hardiness of the winter. Now, this winter we've had night temperatures of around two degrees Celsius. And for, my, for most of my cacti, I did not bring them indoors. I kept them completely dry and now that it's spring they've begun to grow again 
so you will have no issues with the plants if you keep them completely dry when you start to water again in spring is when you start noticing growth even if you haven't watered your plants they will start to push out small amounts of growth in the spring and that is a sign to tell you when to water now some of the harder to grow cacti like the ubermanias or mellow cactus are not cold hardy and you do need to bring them indoors as they will suffer at around 10 to 12 degrees celsius but with most other cacti as long as your place does not get hard frosts or light frost or frost at all keep them completely dry over the winter outdoors is no problem provided that you provide something like this where you can actually close up and prevent rain from getting in which is also another factor that you don't want your cacti to be in the rain because that will that will cause problems especially in the winter you might be able to get away with it in summer if it only rains around once a week but make sure you keep your cacti completely dry over the winter and you don't touch them they don't really need that much light in winter because they are not growing so even if it's quite dark in the place where you put it because it's not growing they won't grow thinner so you don't need to worry about that but the main thing is to keep them dry so i hope you learned something from this video and from my experience that i'm sharing with you i am rebooting the for beginners and amateurs series and i do encourage any viewers who haven't grown cacti succulents before to give this a go you have trust me you have a lot of fun it's very interesting to understand a part of the plant world where they have managed to survive and overcome many challenges faced in the natural environment and it'll really let you appreciate just what some of these plants can actually withstand and tolerate so i hope you enjoyed this video please like comment subscribe and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below i do answer your comments and i do look at them so if you have any questions feel free to ask them but anyways thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one bye